so I think I will uh, start even if uh, Mankatesh is not here. The, the plan today is uh, uh, to continue on uh, these examples of uh, metric spaces. with Finsler structure. In fact, uh, I m I'm more or less, I'm talking about a series of metric spaces, uh, which I studied in several settings, and where I'm insisting on the, on some, uh, on some uh, specific questions in, the, in these metric spaces, for instance, the Finsler structure, the existence of geodesics, the uniqueness of geodesics between two points, and then sometimes other, other, uh, other properties specific to the metric spaces. So let me, before I, I begin, give a list of all these metric spaces which I still want to talk about. So there's, there's this, uh, I will finish today I mean, I will do, I will say one more thing about uh, the Finsner structure of the uh, non-Euclidean uh, Funk uh, 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 Finsner structure of the Funk metric. Uh, I will say something about the time-like fun Funk metric, about its non-Euclid, uh, uh, the Euclidean and the non-Euclidean, about its Finsner structure. Mm, I will talk about the Hausdorff metric. Uh, in fact, th there are three or four metrics left, which I will talk about. Uh, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to define them in detail because they have been already mentioned. They were already mentioned during several talks here. So there's this Hausdorff metric on uh, uh, closed subset, closed compact subsets of a metric space. There is this um, uh, Teichmüller metric, which I want to talk about a little bit. So this was mentioned by uh, Oshika. Uh, there is the Thurston metric also on Teichmüller space, which was men mentioned by Oshika. He proved several, I mean, he, he stated a few theorems about uh, a few results, and he explained to you uh, uh, what they mean. And then uh, the Teichmüller metric, and the and the and the uh, and the uh, Thurston metric, I will ex I will extend them to some uh, other settings like closed subsets in the plane, and this will make the relation with the Hausdorff metric. Okay, so let me uh, start with this. What I wanted to say, this is about the Finsler structure of so Euclidean Euclidean and non Euclidean Funk metric. Uh, I, w I just want to give the formula, in fact, just to show you that there's a Finsner structure. So as you, as you remember, the Finsner structure, mm, it is uh, at each point of the tangent, uh, uh, of the tangent space to your manifold, you have a norm which, which, which allows you to, to measure the lengths of the tangent vectors and to compute lengths of curves and so on. So just uh, this is, this is the, uh, so we have this, we have this open set omega, and then uh, a point x in omega, and a vector xi at omega, and the Finsler structure is uh, a formula for this, for the lengths of so in the Euclidean, 
in the Euclidean case, this is uh, P omega of X of Psi. This is the supremum uh, over all the uh, uh, supporting support hyperplanes. of uh, the Euclidean norm of Xi divided by the distance of X to this point here. This point here, I call it uh, T of X Xi and, well, so, sorry. Uh, you see, I'm taking, so pi is a support hyperplane, so in fact, uh, the support hyperplane is not necessarily at this point, it's, it, it, it's a support hyperplane at any point, and then this is here, this point is, this point is, this point is uh, distance from x to t, X psi pi. This point is, is uh, T of X psi pi. So you find this uh, last time I gave you a formula, a formula for the funk distance uh, between X and Y, for the funk distance between X and Y uh, in terms of uh, supremum over o all the all the uh, all the support hyperplanes, and uh, the way you, I mean, this is the general way to show that a metric is Finsler or not. You have to guess. You have to guess the uh, uh, the, the norm. Uh, so you, you you have to guess the norm by taking by taking the distance. So you take you take a geodesic. You take a a, small, a point on the geodesic and. You, you take the limit when the, this geodesic, uh, when this geodesic, uh, when, when this point converges to X along this, uh, this, this geodesic. So the geodesics here for this metric, as we saw, uh, I mean you can take as a geodesic the Euclidean, the Euclidean, uh, Euclidean segment, so it makes the calculations uh, easier. And then when you have, when you have, when you have this formula, when you have this formula, and then you want you want to show that this formula is gives you a Finsler structure for your manifold. So you mm, you define the, a, a new metric on this on this uh, on this space uh, using this formula and taking the distance between two points to be the distance to be the infimum of the length of uh, C1 curves or C1 C1 curve, let's say, between one point and another, you find a metric, and then you, you must show that the two metrics uh, coincide. This is the general, uh, the general way to, s to see that a metric is a Finsler metric. It, 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 sometimes you, don't, you, you, you fail, and your metric, even though you can find an infinitesimal metric like this, uh, it turns out that this, this gives you another metric, which, uh, which, is, which is a Finsler metric, but which is not your... Which is not your uh, uh, which is not what you want. Which is not. Uh, which does not. Which does not. Uh, which does not coincide with. With the. Uh, with your uh, initial metric. I mean, you, you know this. Okay. Sometimes you have a distance function. You want to. You want to. You compute. You, uh, you define another distance function by computing lengths of curves with uh, lengths uh, with the lengths defined using your initial metric, and then you uh, you end up with with. A another metric. Uh, when you end up with the same metric, then the metric is said to be an interior metric or uh, an intrinsic metric or something like that. But sometimes the interior metric or the intrinsic metric is not, is not the, uh, the metric you, you started with. So this is the Euclidean. And now, as I defined the, I defined you the non-Euclidean, uh, I defined for you the non-Euclidean uh, uh, funk metric. And then, so let's say the hyperbolic. The hyperbolic. In fact, for the hyperbolic, it's the same. 
uh, it turns out it is the same, the same formula here, except that here in the denominator you have to put uh, hyperbolic tangent. And I don't write it, but in the case of the spherical Funk metric here, uh, you have to put the uh, uh, tangent, the usual tangent. Uh, so the computations are not very difficult, and this is this is contained in a paper I wrote uh, a few years ago with uh, with uh, Studio Yamada. And then we we also after this we studied the. Uh, let me just mention it here. Since I talked about this um, in the first in the first uh, lecture, I think you, there's an analogous uh, an, 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 an analogous situation in the case of the um, of the time like time like. Time like Funk metric, in fact, uh, whether it is uh, Euclidean, Euclidean or non Euclidean, Euclidean and non Euclidean, and uh, uh, so these are Euclidean and non Euclidean. These are yes, Finsler metrics. These are Finsler metrics, and the, the formulas resemble to this one, except that instead of the supremum, you have uh, infimum because you have concaveness. You see, you have concaveness, concaveness instead of uh, convexity, and so on. I mean, there are a lot of developments for these theories. Uh, remember, I told you to, that the I gave you a description of the Funk metric as a tautological metric. In, instead of, instead of, instead of describing, instead of describing the uh, the norm of each vector, uh, I, I can give you the unit ball, the unit ball at this point of the of the uh, norm, and. Uh, remember, I told you that the unit ball, in fact, is this, is this, uh, is this convex set itself. This is, this is what is, in fact, this is more or less what this uh, formula te tells you. Uh, and in the, uh, in the, in the uh, time-like case, so you are, in, you have two points in the in the complement of your convex set. So this is also tautological. Uh, and the unit ball, you see you, the unit ball for your, for your, uh, for your time-like semi-norm, well, time-like weak norm or whatever, or your time-like norm, or sometimes it's called the time Minkowski norm, the time-like Minkowski norm. Uh, remember, it was a, uh, we had a cone here. It's defined. It's defined on a cone. In fact, it's defined on the cone of vectors, uh, which are in this region here. And this is this is the unit ball uh, of your of your uh, Minkowski time-like norm. So so everything everything fits here. Everything fits here. So uh, now I want to go on on my to this uh, to describe the new uh, the other the other uh, metric spaces which I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first one is uh, the first one I want to talk about. In fact, I could have started with the with the uh, Hausdorff metric. I could have started with the Hausdorff metric because it's it's more familiar. The Hausdorff metric is a more familiar metric to. To, to you, uh, but let me start by some other metric, in fact, which is the uh, which is the the 
Steinschmüller Metric. which I want to describe in some words which are different from what uh, Oshika says, but uh, from what Oshika told you, but uh, uh, it will give you some other information about this metric. Uh, and let me describe the, I mean, the, the <laughs> basic things. Uh, yes, so in the, f in the uh, so what, what I'm interested in, in fact, is to find geodesics for all these metrics. So for the time like, for the time like Funk here, which was, which I erased, and for all these non-Euclidean Funk and so on, I have, uh, so there, there's also a paper with, a, a paper which I, w which I published very recently with Yamada on this, on the time like case where we de describe geodesics in fact. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I, I think that finding geodesics for a metric is something is one of the one of the basic things because with the geodesics you can you can do other other I mean as soon as you have the geodesics and you can ha ask uh, very good questions like like for the Hausdorff distance between the Hausdorff distance on the space of subsets of the of the plane say compact subsets of the plane you want to uh, you know the definition of the Hausdorff distance and distance I will recall it. Uh, Later, but but then I asked you uh, whether uh, you can describe geodesics joining two convex sets, like fami families describing a family of convex sets which pass continuously from one convex set to the other, and and such that the Hausdorff distance between between three points on this on this family realizes the triangle equality instead of the triangle inequality. So this would be a geodesic, and then you have. You have all the good questions on the uniqueness of geodesics of the, on the triangles and in this in this space whether they are uh, they satisfy some high, uh, some hyperbolicity condition and you have mm, I mean, uh, other kinds of other kinds of things you see uh, before going before before talking about this let me mention uh, I mean I was. Uh, uh, I talked about the Hilbert metric. You remember? Uh, the Hilbert metric as the symmetrization of the Funk metric. You remember this? The Hilbert metric is the symmetrization. And uh, uh, there are several, uh, there are several characterizations of, of the Hilbert metric the Hilbert metric of the, well, of the circle, of the circle or of the ellipse. Uh, there are no such characterizations of the Hilbert metric of the, of the Funk metric of the circle of the ellipse. I don't know if this is uh, interesting or if this is uh, a good question. I think it's a good question a priori, but uh, one, one would like to have the same kind of characterizations mm, for the, so for the non-symmetric version of the Hilbert metric, which is the Funk metric. For instance, it is a result of, <coughs> of Busemann. I always uh, refer to Busemann. It's a result of Busemann that the uh, Hilbert metric uh, of a convex set is Riemannian if and only if this convex set is an ellipse. I mean, ellipse ellipse or ellipsoid, in fact, in higher dimensions. But, uh, so in general, it is a Finsler metric, and the good question is, uh, when is it uh, Riemannian? So other, other, other uh, characterizations, and this is why I mentioned this here, is a characterization using, uh, uh, using triangles, triangles, in fact. Mm -hmm. So uh, triangles, are, are union unions of these union of these three uh, geodesics joining three points, and this is a result of 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 uh, uh, Gaul, Gaul. It's it's a, it's a recent result, or maybe five or six years. 
uh, Buzeman result is uh, 60 or 70 years. So this is, so he says that uh, uh, the Hilbert metric of a convex set is an ellipse if and only if in every triangle uh, uh, these three medians uh, meet in the same point. Okay, so this is an interesting characterization and it makes use of the existence of the geodesics and the triangles and so on. Uh, there are other results of the same sort in fact, but this is an, uh, one, one, example, one example in fact. Uh, uh, let me mention another result by, by Buzeman which, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, you see in this in these metric spaces, you can define the notion of uh, uh, perpendicularity purely, purely, purely uh, a metrical notion of perpendicularity. Uh, you say that, uh, okay, I have a line L1, this is L1, and then you have a line L2, and you assume that L2 intersects L1, and uh, you say that, uh, well, L2 is perpendicular to L1 if uh, this intersection point here between L2 and L1, this intersection point uh, realizes the, the minimum of the distance from any point on L2 on, on a point in L1, okay? So L2 is perpendicular to, L, uh, to L1 if uh, for any, uh, so this is E, E is the intersection point, so you say that L2 is perpendicular to L1 if and only if for any X on L2, the distance, the Hilbert distance from X to E uh, so, sorry, is less or equal to the Hilbert distance from X to Y for every Y in L1. This is one of the, one of the possible definitions of perpendicularity in Euclidean geometry and this is the one you use here. Yes. I uh, see. This triangle and this triangle, you mean, are similar? Uh, similar, what do you mean similar? You mean... Uh, uh, yes. I see. I see. I see. I see, okay, so you, th you think it's, uh, it's uh, equivalent? Okay, 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 so he has another definition of perpendicularity which is maybe equivalent to this one but uh, maybe it's not and you can check this other definition of perpendicularity. The thing is that, the thing is that it's not at all clear whether uh, this, uh, this uh, relation here is symmetric, right? It's not at all clear. And the theorem of Boozman tells you that this relation is symmetric if and only if your convex set is an ellipse. So this is also another characterization of the ellipse using the, using the Hilbert metric. So this kind of problems you can, uh, I think nobody studied them in other, in other, for other metrics, for other, um, uh, 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 for other metrics I, I defined or other metrics that you can, you can find in, in the literature or, or that you, you may define. So this is the kind of question. So let me now tell you a few things about this, this Teichmuller metric. And I want to, I want to say a few words about it in some special, special, uh, 
special case, which is, uh, say, the plane, the, com the complex plane. Complex plane, you see, I'm, uh, I don't want to go to more complicated, to more complicated spaces. The complex plane is already uh, very complicated. So uh, let me start first by this uniformization. Uh, in fact, even the uniformization theorem in a special case, this is, uh, I think, this is the Riemann mapping theorem. We don't need the uniformization. In fact, here we just need the Riemann mapping theorem. It tells you that, it tells you that if you have a, uh, you see, if you have a, if you have a, say, an open, an open subset of the plane, which is homeomorphic to a disk, then, uh, then you can, you can find a, you can find a, a conformal mapping, a conformal homeomorphism, which sends this set to the unit disk. And conformal, I mean conformal, it just, it just, it just means angle preserving. So if you think about it a little bit, uh, it's not at all trivial. I mean, you want, how, how would you, well, I mean, okay. I mean, this is one of the basic, uh, one of the first big theorems in conformal geometry. It was, uh, it was proved by Riemann. Riemann, among other things, he proved other things in his thesis, in fact, in his PhD thesis, he proved this theorem, the, which we call the Riemann mapping theorem. And in fact, uh, okay, I don't want to talk about about the history, but uh, this introduced the subject of complex analysis. There was no complex analysis before. In fact, this is the, the kind of inauguration of the field of complex analysis of conformal geometry, because it was a, I mean, conformal, conformal maps were, uh, people knew about conformal maps, but not, there was no, there was no strong theorem as this one. There was no, no, no theorem. That, so, okay, so, and furthermore, there's something a little bit a little bit more, which tells you that if you have uh, three points here, you can choose any any three points on the boundary. You see, there's a theory which is uh, more or less attributed to Carathéodory. just after Riemann, in fact, a few years after Riemann, which tells you that this conformal mapping extends to the boundary. It extends to the boundary under, uh, under some small condition, very small, very small topological condition. In fact, if your open set, if your open close, if your open, if the closure of your, if the closure of your open set, if the closure of your open set has a point like this, a double point, then it's clear that this map does not extend to the boundary because this point here, uh, this point here, which which uh, which appears here, this point near the boundary, which ap appears here, and this other point here, these two points which are which I marked, one appears here and one appears here, and uh, the, the, the you cannot extend to the boundary, you cannot extend continuously. But more or less, Carat Theodoris theorem t tells you that. The, Provided you don't have such things, then the map extends to the boundary. Yes? Yes, I know, but uh, I'm not <laughs> okay, you need some regularity, yes. Oh, okay, fine, thank you. Yes, so, so you need that the boundary is uh, class C1 or whatever, class C1? Much less. Okay, much less, okay, class epsilon, but I mean, I'm just uh, talking about the basic things. So, there, uh, and then the, the, 
the Riemann. So the, the, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, extension of the Riemann mapping tells you that if you take any three, an arbitrary three points here, then you can send them, you can, you can, you can send them in fact to uh, uh, any, any, any chosen uh, points on the boundary, say y1, y2, y3. Okay? This is the complement of Riemann's mapping theorem on the boundary. Uh, so the everything is good. Any, any three points, uh, on any, any simply connected subset of the plane, open subset of the plane, I can, I can so they are all equivalent, in fact. All, 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 all simply connected uh, open subsets of the plane with three marked points on the boundary are all equivalent. Now, the next, the next question is, uh, uh, suppose we, suppose we, we have uh, four points instead of, of three. Suppose we, we take four points instead of three. Uh, so what happens here? So in general, in general, you see, si since the map is determined by, 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 by the three points, if I take here another point, uh, uh, y4, then my conformal map will not take, will not take x3 to y4, right? In general, it will, in, in, there's no reason why it takes x, x3. So now the next question is, the next question is, uh, so I consider, uh, I consider this same situation, an open subset, con simply connected subset with four points on the boundary. Uh, and uh, here, uh, in fact, I can formulate it maybe more, more generally, more generally in this, in this way more generally in this way. I take, I take, uh, I take two, two open, two open uh, simply connected subsets of the plane. This one with x1, x, x2, x3, x4, and this one, this one here with y1, y2, y3, to y4. And I consider, I consider, say, homo homeomorphisms, f uh, homeomorphism. I know that I have no chance, except in very, very special cases, I have no chance of finding a conformal map, but I consider a homeomorphism uh, sending y1, y2, y3, y4, uh, sorry, sending x1, x2, x3, x4 to, uh, to y1, y2, y3, y4. I consider all these homeomorphisms I, I, and I ask, and I ask what is what is, what is the best one? I know that in general, the conformal map does not exist, so I cannot hope for a conformal map. I'm asking what is the best such map? What is the best such map? And uh, I will explain what, in what sense, in what sense, uh, you have a best, you have a best, you have a best map. In what sense you can have a best map? In fact, I will explain two ways in which you can have a best best map, uh, which gives, and both ways gives rise to metrics. They give rise to metrics on the space of simply connected subsets of the plane with marked points on the boundary. Uh, of course, here you can add points. You can, you can make it five points or six points. 
right? So you can have you the, your your objects here are maybe simply connected open subsets with six points on the on the boundary. You have a set this collection, and you want you want to f to find the best map. And this this w this will lead this this question leads uh, to metrics on spaces of spaces of uh, spaces of what spaces of uh, open simply connected i make it i put it here into parentheses because the same question exactly the same question you can ask it for non simply connected subsets of the plane of course in fact in fact you can start you can you can say okay i'm studying i'm studying the subsets of the plane which are like this one triply connected triply connected they have, you have two uh, three boundary components instead of one uh, and and uh, and with marked points on the boundary with marked points on the boundary uh, it leads to several metrics in fact and I want to mention two of these metrics and and uh, and uh, but there are there are more in fact there are many in fact there are many metrics uh, and this will make a relation with uh, what Oshika talked about this leads to metrics. So first, first the Teich-Müller metric, and it leads also to the Thurston metric. So let me explain how it how first it leads to the uh, to the Teich-Müller metric. So the, teich, the the thing is to to give to give a to give a meaning to this best best mapping between them, best mapping between them, and to show that uh, this mapping uh, uh, this mapping exists or this mapping is unique and so on. I mean, you have several questions. So where where do I write now? Uh, okay, let's let's do it here. Yes, this is like the metric and. So, uh, in for the Teichmüller metric, for the Teichmüller metric, while V or A best mapping is a closest to conformal mapping. So you know that you don't you you, you don't have usually a conformal mapping, but you want to uh, you want to have the closest to a conformal mapping. So what is the closest to conformal mapping? First, uh, and now now I, I want to say this thing which Oshika said, but with, dif with different words. So remember, remember what is a conformal mapping, in fact. I said that a conformal mapping, a conformal mapping, uh, a conformal mapping a conformal mapping from from the plane to itself or from a subset of the plane to the subset of the of the plane uh, is this is a an angle preserving mapping It's the same thing, in fact, conformal and angle preserving. So uh, one way to say what is the best formal mapping is to say that, well, the angle, the angle 
uh, distortion is a minimum. Okay, at, so you have at each point of your at each point of your space, uh, you take two tangent vectors. Suppose suppose the map is is differentiable. Suppose uh, you suppose you have instead of homeomorphism, diffeomorphism. I don't care about this, and I don't. And uh, this is not not so important. So in this, uh, at this point, so and then. Uh, uh, Suppose that this, uh, he, here you have an angle, uh, two vectors at, uh, with angle alpha, and then, uh, and then they are, they are sent by your map to two, to two, to two tangent vectors, making an angle beta, making an angle beta. Uh, so, in general, beta is not equal to alpha. So you have beta over alpha. You take this. You take this. Uh, quotient of beta divided by alpha. And then, uh, okay, you take the supremum, uh, the supremum over all such angles and over all such all points in your surface. And then uh, this is for your mapping. This is, well, this is uh, contained between two constants, say m and one over m, one over m. And then you want to find a map where uh, this m here, this m here, is the minimum uh, among among all the homeomorphisms, among all the homeomorphisms, uh, all the homeomorphisms be between all the homeomorphisms or diffeomorphisms from your uh, from your uh, first open set sending the four distinguished points to the four distinguished points uh, between the your two open sets. And then, and then you, define, you, define the, you define the distance. Now you define the distance between your two open sets, the distance between your two open sets as the logarithm of this best constant here. And you find exactly the Teichmuller distance. Okay, you find the Teichmuller distance. You take the logarithm because the logarithm behaves well with respect to composition, and, and then uh, you, for the triangle inequality, you need you need this property and so on. But I mean, the logarithm is not is not the important thing. But the this measure here, this best lip, this best constant here, uh, gives you the gives you the the definition of the Teichmuller distance between. Uh, your two open sets, and now you have the, the good questions. Uh, how can I find? How can I find geodesics? Well, uh, are there geodesics? So here I have, here I have my open first open set with these four points. Here I have another uh, open simply connected set with these four points. Uh, can I join them by a family of by a family of uh, uh, simply connected? Uh, open sets with four distinguished points on the boundary, which which makes me pass from this one to this one, a family of geodesics for this metric, which I just told you about. So this is this is the definition of the Teichmuller distance. Of course, uh, okay. People in general, people in general work about uh, work with a closest closer definition, which turns out to be which turns out to be. Uh, more, more practical. More practical instead of instead of talking about distortions of angles, they talk about they talk about uh, distortion. Well, of circles, and in fact, distortions of infinitesimal infinitesimal circles uh, I want to, to recall this definition because if you if you see it then in the literature you will understand <laughs> I mean you understand what what they are talking about <coughs> and this is the definition of the uh, quasi conformality which which uh, Oshikato talked about so, so remember that uh, conformal conformal means 
preserves distances, uh, preserves angles, and quasi-conformal me means preserves angles up to uh, up to some bound, which which is what I said here. So so quasi. -conformal the word quasi-conformal refers to this, this sort of things, or preserve distortions of circles. So, so here you, you must remember another property, which is also a characteristic property of conformal maps, is that conformal maps it sends circles it sends circles to circles. Okay. A non-conformal map send circles to something else, right? But uh, the thing is that, uh, uh, say, a C1 differentiable map, non-conformal map, a C1 non-conformal map uh, sends, well, infinitesimal circles to infinitesimal to infinitesimal ellipses. Uh, here I said a conformal map sends a circle to uh, a, a non-conformal non map sends, sends circle to whatever you want, but infinitesimally it sends <coughs> circles to ellipses in the sense that you see uh, uh, since it is uh, differentiable map, I'm talking about differentiable maps, uh, then you can see the action on the tangent space. And on the tangent space, it's a linear map. So it sends circles, a circle cent center to the origin to an ellipse. Okay? Uh, a, a, a differentiable map, you write, uh, you have to write, uh, uh, it's, you, you, it's described by a matrix, you see, and this, this matrix is just, a linear map, it sends a circle to an ellipse. So, so this is the meaning of this sentence. A C1 non-conformal map uh, sends, so now this is, this is a circle, circle in tangent space, circle in tangent space at this point. Uh, it sends it to an ellipse. This is why. This is because it is, it is a linear map. Uh, if it's conformal, it sends a circle to a circle. Okay. If it's non-conformal, it sends. A, so now you can measure this ellipse. Uh, you can measure its, its defect of conformality. Uh, so this is, uh, so an ellipse compared to a circle. An ellipse has a great axis and a small axis. So this is, let's call it G, this length here, divided by L, the divided by S, say the small axis. And the ratio G over S, G over S does not depend on, on the radius of the initial disk. This is why it, uh, uh, I can, it, it is well defined now, this ratio is well defined. And then, uh, and then, and then the defect of the defect of conformality. So the, the defect of, of conformality. So the defect <coughs> of conformality. Let's write it here. The defect of the defect of conformality of the C1 map uh, at X is, well, G over S, and the defect of conformality of my map, now, the defect of conformality, the defect of conformality, the defect of conformality of the map F, of the map F, uh, this is the supremum, the supremum of uh, G over S uh, for any X in in my 
in my open set, which let's call it omega. So this is this depends on x, this depends on x, and they, I, I take the supremum. Okay. And now I define I define the I define the So I have I have I have two open sets now omega 1 and omega 2 and I'm looking only at homeomorphism well diffeomorphism which sends uh, x1 x2 and then xn here to y1 y2 yn so these are uh, homeomorphisms or diffeomorphisms which send the 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 uh, marked points here to the marked points here. So this is a distance between uh, open simply connected sets with marked points on the boundary. And, uh, and I define the distance between omega one and omega two <coughs> as the distance between omega one and omega two as uh, the logarithm, the logarithm of, uh, let's call this the defect of conformality of X, let's call it D, the defe defect of conformality, as the logarithm of the, uh, in fact, I have the logarithm, the logarithm of D. You know, you understand now, now I have to take logarithm. It's like the, the other metrics which I took before, you, you always have to take logarithm in the Funk metric, in, in, the, in the Hilbert metric, there are always a logarithm. And here you take you take the infimum over all maps f between between these two between these two uh, between these two open sets. And th now this is precisely the way the Teichmuller metric is defined. The Teichmuller metric is defined. It turns out this is not an easy problem. This is not an easy problem. This is not an easy problem to, 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 to show that such maps exist, to show that such maps exist, that such maps exist, a map which realizes this infimum exists, that it is a homeomorphism, and that uh, in fact it turns out it is unique. It is unique. And this is the Teichmuller theory. In fact, uh, we have, the Riemann mapping theorem, we have this, 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 which I just described with four points instead of three. This problem of existence for the four problems was, was, uh, was solved by By Grudge. I remember Oshika mentioned this because he was not sure about uh, how you to write this, and I'm not, now I'm not sure, but I think it is this. Grudge. Grudge solved this problem. He showed that the, the map exists and it's unique for four points on the boundary. Then Teichmuller considered the case of five points. The case of five points turned out to be to be workable. He wrote a, a long paper on this, in fact, a, a, a paper of several pages. And then he, 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 he developed this theory for an arbitrary number of points and an arbitrary number of, of, uh, uh, of surfaces, not, not necessarily surfaces which are subsets of the plane, but general Riemann surfaces and so on. And this is, this is how, how this, theory, this theory started and, and was developed. Uh, Unfortunately, I, I will not be able to say something, something, uh, to say uh, several things about uh, several more things about this. But let me mention this Thurston metric. This Thurston metric is so you have the same kind. Of, the idea is the same. In fact, you want to you want to de you want to define. So, for instance, let's take let's take let's take uh, non non simply connected non simply connected so here i remove these two ellipses plus i remove this this line here and here i re remove a piece of uh, 
I remove a piece, piece of a circle, say. So you have all these surfaces. This is uh, four. This is a quadruply connected surface. Surface. Uh, and Thurston's idea is instead of instead of studying the best uh, close to conformal map, I want to study the best Lipschitz map between the surface. So what are the maps? Uh, does is there a map which minimizes the Lipschitz constant? The Lipschitz constant between. So the Lipschitz constant uh, of a map is something which, which also Oshika, uh, which also Oshika defined in his, in his, in his, uh, in his last talk, I think. Uh, you see, the, the you have a map. You have a map here, say, a homeomorphism from here to here, and then you define the Lipschitz constant of S as the infimum, the infimum of the distance. So now I'm using the Euclidean metric. I'm using the Euclidean metric of the plane. Okay. So this is the the infimum of the distance between f of x and f of y divided by the, disti the, the, the distance between x and y and taking the infimum over x and y in the plane with x different from y because I don't like to divide by zero. And uh, the distance, the distance, the first and distance between omega one and omega two is is just the the uh, well the okay let's say the infimum of the log of Lipschitz of f uh, for uh, for all homeomorphism f homeomorphism between omega one and omega two so I have to be careful here I, I don't want to to go into the details, I mean, you have to make this positive. You ha I mean, you have to be sure that this is positive. Uh, let me just tell you something here. Uh, let me just tell you something here. Uh, it turns out, in fact, when you work, uh, in fact, th there are a lot of open questions on this. Uh, one open question, uh, I mean, you just want to, to understand this metric. So for instance, uh, ob an obvious thing is, okay, let me take, let me take here uh, a triangle in the plane and let me take and let me take a square let me take a triangle and a square and my question is uh, what is the best Lipschitz map from this triangle to the to the square this is the definition of the Lipschitz constant what is the what is there a map which minimizes this Lipschitz constant and can I compute this Lipschitz constant and it turns out that this is a difficult problem. In fact, anybody who, want, who, want, who is uh, interested can work in that, uh, such, uh, with such a problem. Maybe, maybe there are numerical uh, ways to define it and anyway. So it turns out, but uh, Thurston noticed in fact that the same problem if you work on it in hyperbolic geometry becomes much, much easier in fact. And you can say, you can build this theory of Lipschitz maps between hyperbolic surfaces. The theory of Lipschitz maps between Euclidean surfaces is, uh, is uh, I mean you, you you don't know anything about this. It's it's ra it's completely an open 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 field. But the th theory of Lipschitz mass between hyperbolic surfaces become becomes much easy much easier. And it is it is it is easier. It is much easier. And it's he de he developed this theory. He he showed the existence of geodesics. He showed uh, uh, that this metric is Finsler. In fact, this metric here is Finsler metric, like the Teichmüller metric. In fact, Teichmüller showed that his metric was Finsler. Thurston showed that this metric is Finsler. And uh, the, 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 I mean, everything works because of one thing, in fact, which Thurston noticed is that, uh, is that you have in hyperbolic space, which is something you don't have, you don't have in, in, in the Euclidean plane and you don't have in, in the, in the, uh, in the sphere, in the spheric, in spherical geometry, is this existence of, uh, this existence of, 
uh, what is called ideal triangles. Uh, that is triangles with the three vertices at infinity. You don't have this in Euclidean geometry. And on the sphere, you don't have any infinity, so you don't have any of these. But in the, in the hyperbolic plane, in fact, these ideal triangles appeared in several, in several talks here. So for instance, one, two, three, this is an ideal triangle. This morning, it was drawn here on the, on the blackboard. So this is a triangle. The angles are zero. The angles are zero. The angles are zero. So here, here, here the angle is what it is. Whatever, in fact, if you draw it here, if you draw it in this model, you can see that the angles are zero. Or here, you can draw it here. One, two, three. This is an ideal triangle. So the existence of ideal triangles and, uh, and, and the fact that there are, uh, you see, there are, you have, for an ideal triangle, you have, you have some lines, some canonical lines which you can, which you can draw like this. And, and uh, this is another ideal triangle here. Uh, so you have maps which send you, which send you, which send you this. Which send you, which send you this to this one, I mean one of these here, and then which send you uh, one one of these lines here to another line here, and and so on, and you and then you extend, you extend in the most uh, in the most in the most uh, natural manner by 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 saying that here a distance a distance d I I. A distance d, in fact, a distance d mean, meaning hyperbolic distance d. I send this to the distance k times d, k times d, everything. So here, a distance d prime, it goes to k d prime. So, so this is, uh, this he showed is a Lipschitz map. Lipschitz map. He showed that this is a Lipschitz map with Lipschitz constant, Lipschitz constant k. Lipschitz constant k, and. The, uh, this uh, this comes uh, this uses in a strong way the hyperbolic geometry because if you if you uh, in hyperbolic geometry if you send if you send this something here to a distance d to something a distance k d then you know that on the it, it is contracting the transversals in hyperbolic geometry when you stretch in one direction then you automatically contract in the in the perpendicular direction so the Lipschitz constant in the perpendicular direction is necessarily less than d so d is just uh, in, in fact, k, k. So k is just the Lipschitz constant of this map, and then, and then uh, it is known, in fact, and Thurston uses this that any any hyperbolic surface like this one, in fact, you can make it you can make it as a union of such such ideal triangles, and this is what Oshika called a lamination. You see, you have a union, and then by by build, by, by by combining these maps on the triangles, you you find a map. Between the two surfaces, which restricted to each to each triangle is just this one, and then you have you have you have your theory, you have your geodesics, you have Spinsler structure, you have uh, your boundary structure, and so on and so on. So this is um, this is the I mean this is the uh, first things you you learn when you when you uh, when you study the Thurston metric. Uh, and I, I, I mean, the Packmuller metric is an analogous metric, but uh, instead of instead of uh, Lipschitz maps, you consider these quasi-conformal maps. I don't think I, I used the word quasi-conformal or best best close to conformal maps, and uh, that's it. I think I have to stop here now. So, if there is no comment. Let us once again thank Professor Athenes Papadopoulos for his nice series of lectures. I am offering uh, this uh, memento of this uh, school on behalf of this local organizing committee to a person who is basically responsible for uh, this, all these great events. So thank you so much, Professor. Thank you very much.